today I, I want to talk to you about some things that have vanished. They've disappeared. We no longer have them. Now, this train of thought of mine started when I was having a conversation with some teacher friends of mine recently. And we started talking about the uh, idea of teaching cursive writing. To teach cursive or to not teach cursive was the topic of our conversation. And then that sort of started the whole ball rolling. So this is the conversation that I wanna share with you, my BFFs on YouTube. Okay, to start with, I'm gonna take up the idea of cursive. Now, for some of you ladies, you I don't want you to get your dupes up. I want you to listen and hear me out. So, as a teacher, when I, ta when I taught second grade, towards the end of second grade, we started teaching cursive. Now, mind you, these seven-year-old children had just learned to print. They learned uppercase, they learned lowercase letters and how to print them. Now, all of a sudden, we are teaching them an entire new sound symbol relationship. So, okay, now this is how you make a capital letter A in cursive, and this is how you make a lowercase A in cursive. It takes a long time to do that. And for those youngsters who were just catching on to how to print, and to print correctly, this threw a whole nother wrench into their learning. And um, for a teacher to teach cursive handwriting, it is very, it's time consuming, but it's also relaxing. And let me explain. When you teach a child cursive, first of all, they want to learn cursive because they consider that to be the written, the written part of being older, like older kids cursive write. So they have immediate uh, motivation to learn how to cursive write. So they're quiet and they wanna watch you and they're still, and then you hand them paper with like no lines on it at first because you just wanna get them to begin just like when we were taught cursive, to make those lines, to make those loops, to make those circles, to not pick up your pen or pencil, but to keep it on the paper as you continue from one letter to the next. So when you do teach cursive as a classroom teacher, the room is quiet, the kids are involved, they are very, um, they're very much focused on learning how to, how to write in cursive. So it's kind of a fun thing for teachers to teach. However, it's very time consuming. And the time that it takes to switch a student from printing to cursive, is, is it worthy of their time? I say no. Now, let me tell you a few more things about cursive. Nothing is in cursive. Magazines, newspapers, menus, the internet, um, newsletters, mail, nothing that we receive is in ballots, nothing is in cursive. Why in the world are we still teaching and learning cursive? We need to let it go and most of us have. Now, in the generation above me, like I know my mother, my grandmother, they were prided on their cursive. A person's cursive handwriting went before them to announce that this person was well educated, if they had nice cursive, they were raised in a good way, and, and so they prided themselves. Their handwriting went before them as a sign of a character reference. We don't need to do that anymore. Our society has changed. Cursive has vanished. <laughs> okay, another thing that has vanished along with cursive, for the most part, is letter writing. Now, some of you may sit there and say, oh, I write letters all the time. Oh, I love writing letters. Oh, I write this, I write that. Good for you. I don't. Many of us do not. We send emails, we send texts, we send Instagram messages, we, we write, we communicate, but no longer in on stationary. 
it's just not what we do anymore. And so we are letting go of letter writing. Now I will say I do write thank you notes. It depends on the circumstance and the person, but even invitations are done through email and evites, things like that. So no, letter writing, a thing of the past. Encyclopedias. Now I remember when my parents well, we all remember when we would have traveling encyclopedia salespeople, and they would knock on the door and they would display the encyclopedia from A to Z. They would open the pages, they would show the pictures, they showed that one special page of the human body that had the plastic layovers where you could see the different systems, one on top of the other. Oh my gosh, it blew our minds. It was so fantastic. Well, encyclopedias were a wonderful resource for us in the 50s. They were a go-to library in our home in the 50s and maybe early 60s. I'm not even sure about that. But encyclopedias are a thing of the past. We don't need them, we have the internet. Okay, another thing that uh, no, is no longer in use are phone booths. We no longer have to carry enough change with us to make sure we can make a phone call at the local phone booth if we are in need. Now, I, um, I think that's really sad. There's a lot of nostalgia attached to phone booths. We don't use them, we don't need them, they have vanished. We also don't need photo albums or hard copy photographs. Now, for, my photographs, my, my pictures of me as a child at Christmas, myself as an adolescent graduating from high school, college, my marriage pictures, my pictures of my daughter as she was born and young, they are all fading. So what I've done is I have taken pictures of those and turned them into DVDs. And I'm glad I did, but I, I no longer, actually I still have my photo albums, but they're sticky, they're dirty, they are old and grungy. So photos and photo albums are a thing of the past. <laughs> okay, another thing that's a thing of the past, remember when we used to receive these big envelopes filled with post dated checks that we had written. So I only write two checks a month and one of them will be gone shortly as soon as I work it out with my bank so that I have direct deposit with that particular company. So no longer are we writing enough checks that banks or credit unions are sending us copies of our post dated checks for us to keep tabs on. Those are a thing of the past, they have vanished, thank goodness. Um, all right, another thing that has sort of vanished are paper maps. Now, I was traveling about a year ago and I was lost and I needed a paper map. I pulled off the highway more than once, went into like a 7-Eleven or a Mini Mart kind of a thing asking for a paper map. The only maps that they had were these beautiful big books that were very pricey and they were like of state highways and state hallmarks and things like that. That's not what I needed. I needed a map that I could spread out and go you know, look at the little map rows and figure out the um, how far from here to here, what's the city from here to here. But it was all on my navigation or my cell phone but I didn't happen to have good reception at the time. And so I was a bit lost. I needed a paper map. Paper maps, I don't know if they still exist. Well, I'm sure they exist. And I even re remember, because I'm a member of Auto Club, those trick ticks that I used to get. And there were these little long, uh, little, uh, little notebooky type things that really recorded from starting to end the mileage, the cities, every the stops, everything that we would need to get from part place A to place B. And I don't think they even make trip ticks anymore. So let's see you guys, I think that's about all. Oh, another thing, one last thing is long distance. Now, I remember when I was young and we had the black phone, you know, the duh, 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 hello, 
and then it went to the prince's phone and they were made from that beautiful bake light well in those days if someone did not live fairly near to you if they moved sort of 50 miles 100 miles or 200 miles away from you when you phone them it was considered long distance and it was expensive so i remember one of my friends had moved and i wanted to phone her and i had to go to my mom and dad and say can i talk can i make a phone call to my girlfriend that moved it's long distance and they would my mom and dad would talk and then they would say well call her but don't talk <laughs> Don't talk any longer than three minutes. I guess that was the cutoff or something. So uh, so anyway, I would, you know, I'd call her blah, 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 and she'd call me. Blah, 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 blah. And so long distance is no longer an issue for us. So there are a lot of things as I got to thinking about this cursive issue with my teacher friends and then other things started coming to my mind. What else are we no longer using? You know, we no longer shoe horses we no longer need to learn cursive. We no longer dip our pens in an ink well. We no longer need to use, you know, whatever. Times change. Technology has entered the picture. And I hope that as a mature lifestyle person, as someone on the mature channel here on YouTube, that's part of aging is recognizing what has changed and adapting to it. I'm all for it. I think things change for the better. And we can talk about the good old days, but you know what? I'm not so sure about that. I think the future is bright. So, um, so anyway, ladies, gentlemen, until our next conversation. Spend my coin Love you to show. bits. This is Cindy saying, I'm gonna be see you myself, later. Or I'm gonna be someone else. Skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out. So try not to hold me down. Feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at those beautiful stars. I wanna drive.